So I am taking a gap year this year in 2018. That it's just what you've been dreaming Hey guys, it's me Luke and welcome back to another episode of Talkin' Tea, a series I recently started on my channel where we drink some tea and talk about stuff going on in my life, stuff going on in your life, and stuff going on in the world. So if you have any topics that you would like me to talk about in Talkin' Tea, then please just leave them down below. In today's episode, I thought I would go ahead and talk about why I decided to defer university and take a gap year after high school. I'm also going to be making another episode of Talkin' Tea where I talk about why I think you should be taking a gap year. So stay tuned for that. If you're watching us from the future, I will link it down below. Anyway guys, let's get talking. So in order to explain to you guys why I'm taking a gap year, we're going to have to go back a little bit to when I was 12 years old, just super quick. So when I first moved to Australia when I was 12, I had absolutely no interest in school. I hated it. I was failing. I just didn't give a crap. But there was always two subjects that I was really good at. Maths, I was always getting A's. And then English, I loved writing. So my teachers were constantly speaking to me, telling me about my potential, but I didn't want to hear it. Oh, so grade seven, I did not get very good grades. And then when I went into grade eight, the same thing kind of happened. I was doing really well in math and English, not so much other stuff. But then in grade nine, I started trying and getting really good grades. I think it was because I really wanted to get this award. Our school used to give out these awards called Academic Excellence Awards for like getting all A's. I really, really wanted to get it. So year nine was when I decided that I was gonna try with all my subjects and I ended up getting straight A's and getting those awards. And I basically did that throughout the rest of high school. I was always trying my hardest and people, you know, would make fun of me for like trying so hard. But I just really, really wanted good grades. I didn't even know why I wanted good grades. I just knew that I wanted good grades. I don't, I don't know why, but I was just always trying my absolute hardest and I'd get so sad whenever I got a B or something. It was honestly quite pathetic. It really came in handy in senior because in grade 11 is when everybody started trying, but I'd been trying since year nine, so I was pretty hunky-dory about that. Grade 12 and grade 11 was obviously hard, but then in grade 12 was when the pressure really hit because that was when, you know, everybody's thinking about what they want to do when they graduate, what university courses they want to apply for. And I was in the same boat as many other people so many people had no idea what they wanted to do and it was really difficult because what people don't realize is when you get good grades and I know people are gonna think this is ridiculous like oh he's complaining about getting good grades but there's some pressures that come along with that you know your teachers and students and your parents they expect a certain something from you they expect you to be doing you know a really high level course or something like that it's like you get good grades you must be a doctor or you must be a lawyer like all of that type of stuff like nobody expected me to do anything creative they just assumed that I'd be doing some super smart difficult course and there was a lot of pressure on me because of that. You know, my mom thought that I should be a doctor, my grand thought I should be a plastic surgeon, my biology teacher thought I should study science, and my legal studies teachers thought I should study law, and then my English teachers thought I should study creative writing. It was just so many people telling me what I should do, and it was just really difficult because I had no idea. So halfway through the year, when it came around for us to be applying for university, I went ahead and applied for law because I was really enjoying law at the time. Honestly, it was pretty much just because I was watching How to Get Away with Murder and Suits at the time. I just wanted to be the next Harvey Specter. And I applied for law at the University of Queensland, which is a highly acclaimed university, quite difficult to get into because their OP ranks are really high. If you don't know what an OP is, basically the education system takes all of your grades and this big test that you do called a QCS test, and they put it together and give you a number from one to 25, and that is your OP, one being the best, 25 being the worst. So courses have a OP, so basically, like the law course that I wanted to get into at UQ, you had to get an OP1 to get into that course. I actually ended up getting a three, which I was really happy with, obviously, it's very good, but I didn't think that I would get into that OP1 course. I didn't really care by the end of the year, to be honest, but then I ended up getting into it. They accepted me for whatever reason. And I was just really obsessed with law at the time and criminal law, but really that was never gonna happen for me because it's really difficult to get in law here in Australia because there's so many people trying to be lawyers and also there's not a lot of crime here so there's not many jobs in criminal law and stuff like that but I wanted to do law at the time and I thought it's what I wanted and I was so set on it and I'm so happy that I finally figured out what I wanted to do and people were like yeah that's great like that's what they expected of me 
But then I realized that I didn't really want to do law. Like I'd done some research on it and looked at the pros and cons and realized that it wasn't really for me. And then I kind of thought that maybe I wanted to be a psychologist. You know, I really liked helping people and studying like mental illnesses and how they develop and all that type of stuff. I found it really, really interesting. But then I kind of looked into it and realized how long it would take me for to actually become a licensed psychologist and how much work goes into it. And kind of also thought about how, you know, I struggle with my own mental problems and I feel like listening to other people's all day long would make me really, really depressed. So I figured that wasn't for me. And then when I became a vegan, I got really into health and fitness and all that type of stuff. And I thought that maybe I wanted to be a dietitian or a nutritionist. But then I looked at the courses and obviously you'd have to learn about meat and dairy and eggs and all that type of stuff. And obviously I don't eat that stuff for ethical reasons or for health reasons. So I didn't really want to study about them. And I knew that if I was going to be a dietitian or nutrition, I'd have to work with people who eat that stuff and recommend that stuff because there's not that many vegan dietitians or plant-based dietitians or whatever. There will be in the future, but there's not now. So then I was like, that's not for me. So I had to figure out what I wanted to do next. And honestly, I just spent ages trying to figure out what I want to do. And then I was just like, you know what? Maybe I'll just do a business degree. Like that's very open-ended and I could get any job with that. Like, you know, business degree is pretty great right like that's practical and then I graduated high school and everything changed I started my YouTube channel a week after I graduated and it made me so so happy I just loved filming and editing and I thought that I'd finally found something that I really really enjoyed and then a couple weeks later I really realized how much I loved acting you know I've always loved acting but I kind of pushed it away because people were constantly telling me you know what don't pursue a career in acting you won't get anywhere you'll be poor you know there's too many people trying to do it it's a one in a million chance so I didn't even consider it and then I just watched so many movies during the holidays and watched so many interviews with actors and stuff like that and just realized like that's what I want to do I love acting and I'm just going to ignore the whole practicalities of life and how everybody thinks you should do a certain thing and how being an actor is really difficult so that made me happy I was excited to start up that in the new year and then I bought my camera and I started photography and I was super excited about that and I realized I was having too much fun at home doing all these things yes I still have my two jobs but those are honestly just for money like it doesn't take a lot of brain power for me to be doing that I knew that if I was gonna go to university I knew that it would take up so much time and it would stress me out and I wouldn't be able to do the things that I enjoyed and I also didn't want to go to university just for the sake of going to university like if I'm just doing a business degree that's not really what I'm passionate about it's just going to university because that's what you're traditionally supposed to do and I just realized that you know stuff that that's not what I want to do and what really kind of finalized the decision for me to take a gap year was when I realized that my citizenship has still not come through so I applied to be an Australian citizen a while ago because I'm from South Africa if you didn't know and you need citizenship to get your student loan here and if you don't get your student loan then you don't get university like I can't fork out nine grand a year so I realized I was like I'm not even gonna be able to go to university either year so maybe I just need to accept it and decide to have a gap year. It was also kind of difficult you know because I got such a great offer from the University of Queensland I got accepted into their OP1 course for law and they offered me a scholarship and they offered me this program that I could use for free like they would be offering me such great stuff and then QUT offered me a scholarship and I was getting so many great offers and anyone would have been absolutely ecstatic with all those offers and I was but I didn't want to go to university so I declined. I decided to defer for a year. So if at the end of this year, I realized that I do want to go to university, at least I still have that option. But for now, I accepted that I'm going to need to take a gap year because I won't be able to afford it because my citizenship won't come through in time. And I really kind of realized that I want to take a gap year. You know, I'm having too much fun with YouTube and acting and photography. You know, I just started doing professional photography. I made my professional photography account on Instagram and Facebook and all of that. You can check that out if you want. I've been taking photos of people and stuff like that. I had some great stuff planned. I'm having a lot of fun with this YouTube stuff and I have a lot of YouTube videos planned. And I just signed up with my acting agency the other day and I'm having my first photo shoot next week. So I have so much going on in my life. You know, I've got acting, photography, YouTube. I've got my two jobs, socializing. I've got friends. I've got like, like all of the stuff that I need to do. I've got so much on my plate. I feel like if I just added university to it, it would just be too much. And my doctor and my psychologist both recommended to me that I take a gap year to kind of sort my mental health out and just to kind of get myself back on track because 2017 was such a rough year. And that's what I'm gonna do. Anyway guys, so that's why I'm taking a gap year. I thought that I would go ahead and summarize all of the reasons as to why I'm taking it. A lot of time and thought went into making this decision, but I honestly feel in my gut and in my heart and in my head that this is the right decision 
for me and I really think that it's gonna open so many doors for me and I'm really excited and I think basically the moral of this story or this video is for you to not do what other people tell you to do and not do what other people expect you to do listen to your heart don't think about the money and the practicality or what other people are gonna think just take a leap of faith and do what makes you happy and do what makes you passionate because life is too short to be doing something that doesn't make you happy anyway guys I really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and comment down below what you're gonna be doing in 2018 I'm really interested whether you're still at school or you're going to university or if you're taking a gap year so comment that down below also make sure to stay tuned for next week's episode of talking tea where I'll be talking about why I think you should take a gap year and the benefits of taking a gap year if you're watching this from the future I will link it down below or up above anyway guys that's it from me in this video if you want to see more of me you can check out my social medias they are linked down below as always and I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are in the world bye you mm -hmm.